can you see my screen now uh, yes it is there yeah okay no, yeah okay. good one right this is better you are sure uh, so with your permission uh, may i uh, introduce the speaker to the audience before we start it yeah yeah please, please go ahead. yeah it, uh, dear participants we have with us right now uh, dr tanmoy chakrabarti he is an assistant professor and a ramanujan fellow in the department of computer science and engineering at triple it delhi prior to this he was a post doctoral researcher at university of maryland college park usc he completed his phd in 2015 as a google phd scholar at iit khadakpur india his research group ls lcs2 broadly works in the areas of social network analysis and natural language processing with a major focus on designing data driven solutions for cyber informatics he is a recipient of several prestigious awards including faculty awards or fellowships from google ibm accenture and linkedin he is also involved in mentoring several tech startups he has recently co-authored a book on data science for fake news detection surveys and perspectives he has been appointed as a project director of the technology innovation hub that is a massive initiative taken by the government of india welcome to you sir and uh, at your age such a uh, marvelous profile you carry upon uh, we are very happy to have you here thanks thanks very much uh, professor jain for the uh, nice introduction um and good morning to everyone uh, i know you can't see me but i hope you can hear me properly i am yes, basically good. presenting uh, 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 via my ipad that's why i mean it, it doesn't allow me to enable my webcam and my presentation at the same time so apology for that but i hope you can hear me i would also request you guys to kindly switch on your videos i mean i can i would like to see you so that i would not feel like i'm interacting with my computer only so is it possible for at least a few of you to uh, uh, turn on your videos uh, just to make it much more interactive okay i know this is the i think the last day of this uh, faculty development program i i also understand that you guys possibly have like have been exhausted with a lot of things happening last three four days so i will try to make this presentation as uh as interactive as possible as non technical as possible with uh, less number of equations and um, mathematics but it would be great if if you interact uh with me during the presentation so that it would not look like a monotonous presentation for me okay, okay. so requesting at least a few of you to uh, i mean those who can uh, who can turn on their video kindly do that uh, Yeah, dear Otherwise, participants, please please switch on the video. Yes, yeah, some Others, of you could uh, do it. Yeah, some okay. of you could do it. That would be useful for me. Otherwise, fine, no problem. And sir, being tiring is uh, may not be a problem surely because the participants are really really interactive. I could see it since the last four days. Oh, okay. And That's also, great. this is the first session of the day today. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. But th th but this is the last day, right? And this yeah. is and this is Sunday, so uh, I cannot complain. But right, okay. So no, let no. let's get started. Uh, the, the the way I'm planning to uh, present this uh, this lecture is essentially I will I will give you a glimpse of a new I'm mean, not a new area, but apparently a new area uh, for Indian community. It's called social network analysis, or, or or it is also called as complex networks or network science. It has multiple names. uh i will try to give you a brief of uh, what is social network analysis how we can use it for our uh, research purpose for our um, academic uh, 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 curriculum as well and uh, the second part of the talk uh, one of my phd students uh, shivani kumar she will uh, present some of the hands on uh, codes right and tools to you so that you also get uh, you know uh, accustomed to it the kind of uh, tools and techniques are there in social network analysis okay so um so how many of you 
feel that uh, you are part of a network. So I'll start with a question. Anybody feels that uh, he or she is part of any kind of network? Guys? Uh, will you look into the chat box or the people should unmute? No, no, I, uh, please, please unmute. Please unmute. I, I, can't, I, I can't look at the chat box at the same time. Right? Please unmute and respond. Please unmute and respond. Yeah, definitely. I am a part of network and many networks. Uh, okay. And, For me. Uh, okay. And and what what are the networks that you feel that you are part of? Uh, my family network mm -hmm. is one. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. working environment is in itself a network. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. A okay. So uh, yeah. Great. So uh, I was expecting that that at least some of you will say that no we are not part of a network but as you as you mentioned you are actually a part of multiple networks right now you may also feel some sort of you know inertia some sort of pool some sort of belongingness of the network uh, where you uh, are part of for example right now some of you may be listening to my lecture some of you may be opening the whatsapp and chatting with others some of you may be opening the Facebook and looking at the timeline post and so on and so forth. So every time you kind of feel a, an attraction from some from from these networks, right? So Facebook is one network, WhatsApp is another network. Uh, and some some of you may be doing some some household activities, right? Because I can't see anybody. So so there may be, you know, an attraction as well uh, from within the family. So this is also a network. So uh, as 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 uh, I was mentioning, you are basically part of multiple network. You are part of a network like a WhatsApp kind of network. You are part of a telephone network where you call your friends, your families, right? Uh, your colleague. You are also part of a social network like Facebook, Twitter, etc. And uh, these are all online networks, right? You are also part of offline networks like a friendship network, right? Or a family network. Now. So at, at any point in time, you can feel that you are part of multiple networks, right? In say, say in case of in case of academic network, right, where where uh, two two students are, uh, are are connected, for example, in some ways, uh, either uh, either due to their 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 same say their same department, they are they are they, they belong to same uh, institute, right, and so on and so forth. So now what is network? Um, apparently for undergrad students, right? Network is basically when I, when I talk about network, they basically feel that a, I, I'm, I'm talking about computer network, right? Uh, hub, right? Uh, you have different computers, you have routers and so on. They are connected in some ways. Of course it's a network, but it's, an, it's one type of network. It's not all, right? And of course, due to this advent of deep learning, we, when you talk about network, people may also think that we are talking about deep, deep neural network, right? Like an LSTM or GRU or, or like transformer and so on and so forth. Of course, these are networks, but again, these are another type of network, right? So if you look at the definition of a network, which we are talking about today is is basically a network is a simple mathematical abstraction of a complex system. Okay, so what is complex system? Complex systems. I mean, you can think of our our human body as a complex system where you have uh, you know uh, cells. You know, genes are interacting, cells are interacting. We have tissues, proteins are interacting uh, during our metabolic process, right? And so on and so forth. It's a very complex system, right? Similarly, you can think of say Facebook as a complex system because. You 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 cannot imagine, right? What what are the uh, what are the things happening at the same time, right? Say uh, people are interacting uh, via chat, people are posting things, people are uh, you know retweeting, sharing, right? People are also commenting, people are following, unfollowing. A lot of things are happening at the same time. So all these complex systems, like our human body, our our metabolic process, our uh, uh, all these social networks right uh, uh, 
computer networks, uh, deep neural networks, right? So all these complex systems can be mathematically abstracted, right? Using networks. Okay. Now, uh, in other words, one can also say that a network is a general language for describing a complex system. Okay. Right. But all these definitions are vague, right? I mean, these are okay, but how do we quantify it? There is no quantification as such. Right. So, so the way we quantify a network is is uh, using is, using something called nodes and edges, right? You may have heard about graph. Uh, I mean, all of you know what is graph. So, you know, mathematicians call this as graph, whereas computer scientists, physicists, they call this as network, right? They are kind of synonymous, but well, uh, used in different contexts. Okay. So, uh, so what is graph? We all know what is graph. Uh, basically, a graph consists of a set of nodes and set of edges or links, where nodes are connected, uh, where where two nodes are connected via a link, right? If there is some sort of relation between two nodes, okay. Uh, this kind of network or uh, this kind of graph is not a trivial structure that we can imagine. For example. We may have heard about uh, a trivial graph structure like uh, a star, right? Where you have a central node and you have all these peripheral nodes, right? Uh, or, or you can also think of you know a, a, another trivial graph structure like a line, a line graph, okay? But when we talk about complex network or or, or network in general in this context, we basically talk about massive network, right? Massive network, huge network, uh, where you know the, the the network exhibits some sort of non-trivial properties, right? Now, if you look at the star structure or a line graph or simply a click, right, a complete a complete graph, right, the properties are very simple, a trivial property because we know uh, that uh, you know in, in case of in case of click, uh, all the nodes are, all the nodes are connected to each other. In case of uh, star, there is a star node, there's a central node, and peripheral nodes are surrounded, you know, uh, uh, by this, uh, I mean, peripheral nodes are around the central node, and so on and so forth. So you can quite easily characterize this graph, okay? But say, when I talk about a Facebook graph, right, or a Twitter graph, where, say, in case of Facebook graph, nodes are users, and, um, you know, links are basically friendship relations, right? Uh, I mean, you 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 won't be able to understand uh, quite easily that what are the properties, typical properties of the graph, right? Now, what do you mean by property? Say, if I ask you that, can you measure the the diameter of the graph? Okay. Now, what is the diameter of a graph? Diameter of a graph is the longest shortest path. Right? You you all know what is shortest path? Shortest path between two nodes, right? You all know what is this, right? But uh, and, and what is the diameter? We basically uh, choose all possible pairs of nodes. We measure the shortest path uh, distance of all pairs of nodes, and then we choose that one for which the distance is maximum. So longest shortest path diameter. So if I ask you that, that what's the diameter of say a click one, right? What is the diameter of uh, uh, of a star? Any idea? What's the diameter of a star? Two. No, Professor Jen, can I can I uh, request others to unmute and respond? Yeah, please, if they can do. Uh, yeah, guys, you could always unmute. Please unmute. I have, not, I have not locked the mic. Uh, sir, I think that the diameter of the star is one because uh, from a node we require just one edge to. Uh, Why this I mean, is one? Say for example, from A to B, right? You will have to traverse through this path and two, this path. Two, I mean, two so edges, two edges. But from the central halves, right? node we require only. No, no. One so edge. what I what, what I just mentioned is the longest shortest path. From central yes, node, this is always one, but we'll have to look at all pairs of nodes, right? And then measure the shortest path distance, and we we have to take the longest one among them. Okay, so yes. this is this is this is um, two. Say so in case of a line graph like this, okay, uh, a chain like this, 
where there are n number of nodes, right? Uh, what's the diameter? Diameter is n minus one. N minus one. Right. Great. So now you can easily you can easily calculate this because you know the graph structure is very small. Okay. But in case of a Facebook graph where you have trillions of nodes, right, and trillions of edges, how do we do this manually? So, and interestingly, all these graph traversal algorithms, you know, distance measurement algorithm uh, might not work efficiently when you have such a long, such a huge network. Okay. Well, we'll talk about this later. So, as I, as I was mentioning, a network consists of two entities. One is called nodes or individuals. Other is called the connections or edges or links, right? And uh, why this? Two, why why say two nodes are connected? Two nodes are connected when they exhibit some sort of common property, right? Say, for example, in case of protein-protein interaction network in our in in human body, two proteins interact when they have similar functional property. Okay. Say, in case of Facebook network, two friends, uh, two 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 users become friend when they have some sort of common interest. Say, for for example, I am also uh, I, I I I am also a follower of say Sachin Tendulkar. Somebody else is also a follower of Sachin Tendulkar, and we both we both like uh, posts related to Sachin Tendulkar, and therefore we are friend. Okay. Or say, for example, uh, we both uh, used to be a part of same institute, right? During during uh, during our college life, and therefore. We uh, basically became friend. Okay, there there, there should be some sort of commonalities uh, between two nodes uh, in order to be uh, an edge between them. Okay, so as you see here, but you can also notice here that I have purposefully used different colors with edges and nodes. Right now, what are these colors representing? So these colors for nodes representing different types of nodes. Okay. For example, in case of say Facebook network, you can imagine different types of nodes. So one type of node can be users, right? Another type of node can be can be can be the post itself, the post itself. Another type of node can be the group. There are multiple Facebook groups, right? Where we are part of. You can think of a group as a node, and so on and so forth, right? And how do we connect it? Say for example, this is a user U. This is a group G. Okay. This is a post P. Now, if a user has written a post, if a user has written this post, you can connect U to P. If the user U is a part of a group G, you can connect U and G. Right. Uh, if if another user V, for example, right, reacted on this post P. What do you mean by reaction? Say liking the post or sharing the post or commenting on the post. You can create an edge between V and P. Okay, right. So you can see that there are multiple types of nodes. Similarly, there are multiple types of edges, right? Say for example, this edge indicates the posting behavior or reacting behavior. This edge indicates the belongingness behavior, whether a node is a part of a group or not, right? This edge indicates a friendship behavior between U and V, and so on and so forth. So this kind of network is called heterogeneous network, okay? Heterogeneous network, because there's a heterogeneity in terms of the nodes and edges, types of nodes and edges, okay? So feel free to interrupt me at any point in time if you have any query. So. Yeah, so you sir, yes sir can we have multiple edges uh, within the same set of the vertices yes I mean... yes yes that's a very good question we can have multiple edges between between a pair of nodes right and uh, uh, and this kind of network where 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 you have multiple edges between pairs of nodes between a pair of nodes is called multigraph okay multigraph Okay, now think of a situation where you have um, you have a network, okay, where you have where, where all these nodes are indicating users, just users, okay. So this this network is network is homogeneous in terms of node type, okay. Now 
now it depends on now now how do we create these edges it depends on the application okay for example i can say that okay node u and v are connected if they follow each other node u and v can also be connected if so if you or if 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 one if one user shares the post of another users okay so say so this edge indicates the uh, follower following behavior this edge indicates the sharing behavior right this edge say indicates whether two nodes belong to the same group or not and so on okay so as you see like this kind of heterogeneous network can be mapped to a homogeneous homogeneous network with a multi graph structure okay it solely depends on the purpose right say your purpose is to classify nodes or your purpose is to predict links right or classify links so you can basically model your system accordingly you can model your network accordingly okay great so, so, so mm. uh, this is, the concept is the same as the hypergraph thing right well i mean hypergraph uh, concept is slightly different hyper when you talk about hypergraph we we basically do not we 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 basically uh, assume that uh, nodes are connected via hyperplane okay so you you basically map a to a, what do we say a, a kind of a 2d structure to a multi to a multi dimensional structure right you, what is hypergraph let me tell you so so hypergraph you can imagine these are nodes and all these nodes are connected via a plane okay now let me let me give an example then you will understand okay so think of coauthorship network in scientific literature we all know that a paper is generally generally written by multiple authors right and 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 say you have a bibliographic dataset you have all these papers uh, scientific papers published in computer science domain you basically want to create a graph out of this right and 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 the nodes in this case are authors okay right node in this case are authors now say a paper is written by three authors okay author 1 author 2 and author 3 okay now how do we link this right you can link this via and a hyperplane whose end points are basically these authors right and this hyperplane indicates a paper the paper which which is written by author 1 2 and 3 similarly say there is another paper written by 1 2 and 4 right so this is another paper this is 4 right this is another paper so you see here right nodes are connected via planes different planes okay and this kind of kind of graphs are called hypergraphs okay there are multiple such graph structure um you know uh, i mean the way you can model it one is multi graph other is hypergraph another is multi layered network right multiplex network and so on and so forth i'm not going to details of that but uh, but it's a good question great so if you look at the you know uh, the i mean basically network science is a, a complex network is an interdisciplinary uh, topic right which basically you know falls at the intersection of machine learning data mining uh, some sort of computer systems statistics and theory right we'll talk about uh, uh, i mean something about machine learning data mining part here and some sort of statistics in the time permits okay so i have already given you enough examples of uh, network right so facebook network twitter network twitter follower follower network these are called social network right similarly we have biological network where um, um where different proteins interact during the metabolic process similarly we have metabolic network in case of uh, computational biology right we have communication network right uh, for example say nodes are routers computers and when a packet network packet is being sent from one router to a computer you can create a an 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 edge between the router and the computer right you can also imagine the internet as a network where you know where when you i mean when you click on so 
on the internet this, is, this world wide i mean dub 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 structure world wide web structure you have different uh, web pages web pages are linked through hyperlinks right and when you click on one page you see a lot of hyperlinks then through through uh, one of these hyperlinks you can move to another page and so on and so forth so these web pages are nodes and hyperlinks are basically edges so internet is a is a massive um uh network and and this is kind of a you know natural network this is not a man made network as such so all the wireless say wireless mesh network this kind of network is a man made network this is not a man made network because um because i mean you know, because because any time you can you can uh, upload your own, own web page and you can hyperlink your web page with other web pages so this is kind of a natural network right similarly we have scientific network like citation network where nodes are scientific papers and if a, if a paper cites another paper right if a cite if a, if a paper refers to another paper you can create a directed link from the citing paper to the cited paper this is a directed network okay because edge has a direction similarly you have co authorship network i just mentioned where nodes are uh, uh, researchers or co authors of a paper and if two nodes if two researchers co authored a paper you can create an edge between two nodes right so this this kind of network can also be weighted right now what do you mean by weighted network say uh, author a author b if author a and author b say have written 10 papers together so the weight of this edge is 10 similarly say the weight of this this edge is say 5 so this is a weighted network this is a directed network right so let me ask you, ask you a question here so do you see some sort of property of this kind of citation network okay i i, ho I hope you understood what is citation network nodes are scientific papers and if a paper cites another paper you can create a directed edge from citing paper to cited paper okay so can you imagine a specific property of this kind of citation network which you may not see say in case of co-authorship network or in case of um, in case of facebook network in case of metabolic network right can you can you see some sort of can you imagine uh, you know Uh, a typical property of a citation network which so, you yeah there are some nodes where the degree of that particular node is very high and that that is also there in case of say uh, uh, co-authorship network or say even even uh, internet right say so, in internet there might be some 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 hub nodes right which uh, which is being pointed by multiple nodes or the uh, hub node which is pointing to multiple nodes what else so directionality is definitely a property but directionality can also be there in case of follower following right twitter follower following network you can imagine a directed graph okay someone is saying edge yeah. is one direction only can you please unmute interesting uh, answer vandita can you please unmute vandita mic not working okay good answer so uh, uh you are you are absolutely correct uh, you know uh, so the typical property of the citation network are multiple things so one is that it is always acyclic what is acy what is a cyclic uh, cyclic structure cyclic structure can happen when uh, say from a to b there is an edge and from b to a there is another edge or say from a to b b to c c to a right this kind of cycle exists in a, in a in a graph in case of citation network you will never find a graph uh, a, a cycle right because uh, so i have yes. a question why will not be a cycle in citation network no tell me so you, you, you just tell me a, a case so a typical case has, yeah bolo for a b has cited a c has okay. cited b and a has cited c wait 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 bolo fir se bolo uh, sir for example you have drawn a b c Yes. yes so b has cited a c Wait, has cited b, has, b b has cited a then a c has cited b c has cited c b has... then and a has cited c a has cited c yeah 
any idea it is not possible can can someone tell me why this is not possible uh, so these are authors na the notes are no no no, no 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 notes are papers notes Citation are papers network. notes are papers okay yes then it, yeah, yes true it is not possible it is not possible right yeah. look at the publication year look yeah, at the publication, publication year. year you will imagine so, right it is, so so yeah, it is not so, possible is it not possible so citation network is always acyclic okay there is another interesting property citation network is always a growing network in the sense the edge once created will never be deleted but in case of coauthorship network right i can i can so coauthorship network in some sense is also a kind of a growing network but think of a facebook network right i am a friend of say uh, uh, some uh, i am a friend of x right today tomorrow i may not be a friend of x right i can unfriend him any time okay but once the citation is created it will be there forever so this is always a growing network okay if you look at the temporal temporal structure the size of citation network will always grow or remain same it will never deteriorate it will never decrease okay anyways so there are multiple such properties uh, i used to work on citation network a lot during my phd but i mean today these days we are not but uh, there are multiple papers on that uh, to characterize citation networks mostly in cs domain physics domain and so on okay you can also think of uh, network uh, in the context of uh, natural language processing nlp right say there is something called co co-occurrence network now what is co-occurrence network who in case of co-occurrence network nodes are words nodes are words and if two words co-occur together in a same sentence right you can create an, create an edge between them right say i i i like dog by, by but i do not like cat right so dog and cat these two nouns appear Co appear together in a sentence, so you can create a create an edge between two nodes. Now, why co-occurrence network is important? Co co-occurrence network. It was shown that uh, sometimes it is it, it, it is important to understand the context of a word. Okay, say for example, if dog and cat appear together in multiple sentences, right? A lot of sentences. You can possibly imagine that okay, they possibly, but I mean, dog and cat possibly. Belong to the same community, or they possibly are of same type, right? And so on. There are multiple purposes. I mean, you can use co-occurrence network for understanding context. You can use co-occurrence network for uh, synonym detection, antonym detection, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we have uh, there's something called keyword co-occurrence network. Keyword. We all know what is keyword. In the scientific papers, we always write keywords, right? Now, say, say for example, sentiment analysis is a keyword, right? opinion mining is a keyword now two keywords can be connected if they again co-appear multiple times in different papers right so on so in fact we are i mean i, I always claim i mean it is my claim though uh, i mean you may not agree but i always claim that you can map any complex systems to a network i mean you can imagine any complex system and i can tell you how to map it to a network okay you can think of food web network you can think of gene regulatory network you can think of airlines network railway network power grid network uh, metabolic network uh, you know uh, uh, perfume network uh, there are multiple such networks available i mean we 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 typically map all these systems to networks just to make things easy to analyze okay e-commerce graph is also a network e i mean e-commerce e-commerce system is also a network right so we are basically full of mm, networks so the science of network now why why we are interested in this kind of network structure the reason is that we would like to understand the properties of a network say for example if you know that how facebook network grows over time if you have some mathematical model to mimic how a facebook network grows right you can and if you know that okay facebook network and twitter network structurally they are same right so then you can use the same model the same mathematical model to describe the growth of twitter right 
So, so the, 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 the property, I mean, the interesting question that you ask here that can we formulate some sort of general theorem, some sort of general theorem to understand the structure, evolution, and the dynamics of a network. Okay. So, structure means what are the structural properties of a network, the degree, the uh, diameter, the clustering coefficient, the centrality structure, the network grow, um, so the, the, the centrality structure, the, you know, there's something called assertivity structure and so on and so forth. The next question is how do we model the evolution? How do we, how do we know that how a particular network grows over time, right? This is called the evolution of a network. Dynamics of a network, how do we know that these two nodes are going to be, that these two nodes are going to interact, right? How do we know that these two nodes will belong to the same community? Say, for example, think of a, uh, think of a, uh, a telephone network, right? You have Airtel, Vodafone, Jio, right? And users are essentially nodes. And, and, and if, if one, one user calls another user, then you can create an edge between two users, right? And you can think of this uh, network subscribers, uh, sorry, network um, companies like Jio, Airtel, Vodafone as different communities in the graph, right? So in this graph, in this telephonic network, can we ask, can we, can we predict that which user is going to move from Airtel network to Jio network in future, right? So this is called churn prediction in social network, right? Can we predict the, can, can we predict the churning behavior of, of a node from one community to another community? Now this is very useful as you, as you can easily imagine from a net, from a, from, from this tele, telecommunication uh, company's point of view, right? If, if, if a geo know, if, if geo company knows that user X is, is soon going to move to, uh, to, 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 to their company, they will start calling him right, uh, giving you a lot of, lot of offers, promotions, and so on and so forth, some sort of targeted ad advertisement, right? So, I don't have much time, so I'm just thinking, so I just wanted to make this presentation as uh, abstract as possible, so that at least whatever I will present, people will understand, right? But I don't think I'll have much time, but let's see, I will possibly continue till, till, till 11, and after that, uh, my student will take it. Okay. So now, what are the typical properties that we that we um, that we generally measure in a in, in a network? There's something called small world property, scale free property, clustering and community structure, robustness of a of a of a, of a network uh, of uh, I mean whether a node is robust or whether a network as a whole is robust to an attack or not. Vulnerability of targeted attack, vulnerability of cascade, cascade failure. So I'll talk about all these properties very briefly one by one, right? And if the time permits, we'll go details. So the first one is called small world property. Any idea guys, uh, have you heard of this term called small world property or small world phenomena? Anybody has any idea? It's a six degree of separation. I mean, uh... oh, good. So you know. So, uh, what is small world? So small world property essentially says that the world is small, right? Now, we 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 again model our world as a network, okay? Where you know all these individuals, human beings, are nodes, and if human beings if two human beings know each other, then you can create an edge between them, right? So the small world property says that, you know, that uh, the diameter, the diameter of our world, the diameter of uh, this human interaction network in the world is very small. Now, how small? So, so there is a, there there was a famous experiment uh, conducted by uh, Stanley Milgram in in 1980s, right? So he he established that that the the average distance between any pair of nodes in our world is six. Okay, so this is called six degree of separation. Okay, so let me ask you, if if I if I tell you today that can you 
um, if I if I give you a packet, okay, and I'm uh, and I and I uh, ask you that can you send it to to uh, to Narendra Modi, for example, right? Can you send this packet directly to Narendra Modi? How do you do that? You do not have because you, I I I am hoping that none of you are MLAs or MPs, right, in the audience. So so how do you do that? I mean, we are ordinary person, right? How do you how do we send a packet to Narendra Modi? Any idea? I mean, someone can say that okay, uh, I will post it to Narendra Modi's address and he will get it. It's not so simple, right? So because a lot of such loss of I a mean, lot of such letters packets are possibly being sent to Narendra Modi every day. He 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 doesn't know. In fact, right? How do we make sure that this packet will eventually be delivered to Narendra Modi? Okay, so what what you will do? You will possibly hand hand it over to a BJP MP, right? Or if you do not have have access to BJP MP, you can hand it over to you to your local councillor, right? Your local councillor may hand it over to MLA. The MLA will hand it over to MP. MP will hand it over to 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 some minister, and the minister will hand it over to Modi, right? So the idea is that uh, I mean the the same idea was applied. In the experiment by, uh, by 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 Milgram, okay. So what we what he did, he chose USA as the uh, geographic location for this experiment, and he gave around 300 such letters to uh, to citizens uh, in in uh, in in Nebraska, Omaha, okay, and asked them to send these letters to somebody in Boston. Right. So, so, so if you look at the geographic location of uh, Nebraska and Boston, they are far from each other. Right. Now, what 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 he uh, mentioned? So he he basically gave these three hundred letters to three hundred people and tell and uh, and uh, told them why don't you send and and this is the destination address. Why don't you send these letters to uh, the the this destination address? Now, some of them uh, may have known. The destination address. Some of them uh, may have. Uh, I mean, some of some of them did not have any ideas. So what the uh, I mean, what these uh, people did after that, they handed over these packets to somebody who they felt that know the destination address. Okay. Say for example, I am sending the pack. I'm 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 I I want to send it the packet to MP uh, to to Narendra Modi. So I will say, I will give this packet to my my local councillor maybe, because I know he is a reliable person and he will send and and I also know that he 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 knows the address of Narendra Modi properly and he will deliver it. Okay, so in this way, all these three hundred letters, two ninety six letters were delivered. Many many letters were not delivered as you can easily imagine that people were reluctant that sort of why I mean why will send this letter? So only ninety six ninety seven uh, sorry sixty four letters were delivered. Uh, to the destination, right? Through multiple hops, right? Now, when you measure the distance, right? Average hop, average hop distance from the source node to the destination node, you figure out that the average distance is 5.2. Okay, and from this experiment, he he came up with the idea of six degree of separation. I mean, 5.2 is near to six, and you you can argue why this is near not near to five. So he he basically took the ceiling, so uh, and and then he he basically said that you know uh, there's something called six degree of separation. The world is separated by only six hops. It means that the distance between you and and Donald Trump is six degree, right? You may not, you may you may uh, you know you may laugh, you may um, you may you know say that okay, this is not possible, but I can I can tell you. You know abstractly that it is possible, right? Now think of, think of. So roughly, how many, how many friends you know? Uh, I, I I'm assuming that you roughly know 20 friends, right? Each individual, uh, each individual participant here knows 20 friends, right? Now say think of this, think of this as individual, and and this guy knows 20 friends, okay? So this guy has. Twenty friends, twenty such nodes, right? Now each of these guy, each of these guys, each of these friends has again twenty friends, because we already assume that the average 
number of friends per i mean average number of friends is 20 so 20 now right 20 20 20 so after one hop up till this layer how many nodes are there roughly 20 i mean 21 of course but roughly 20 right after the second hop how many nodes are there tell me 20 raised to the power 20 Tell me, I can't hear you guys. No. Twenty raised to the power twenty. No, it is twenty into twenty. Think about it carefully. Each each of these nodes, each of these nodes has twenty twenty uh, friends again. So twenty square. Yes. Right? So twenty plus twenty square. Plus twenty, and then then after that twenty cube, right? So, if you if you do the calculation, right? And I I already mentioned that the average. So just imagine that the average, um, the, the 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 diameter of this world is six, right? That means that means from each node, right? If you go till fourth layer, say for example twenty twenty square twenty cube. Twenty to the power four, right? Can you can you calculate the mass here? Can you can you calculate the number? If you go till twenty twenty to the power six, right? You will see that you will already cover all the populations of the world. Okay, so mathematically you can you can explain that six degree of separation is. not a imaginary number not an image not an imaginary theorem but people started raising questions as you can also understand because this experiment was a very small scale experiment right because only 64 letters were delivered with only 64 letters how can you conclude the diameter of a world right so later on in 2012 13 facebook did the same kind of experiment but not of course not uh, you know sending letters they did the experiment on their facebook network okay and then they discovered that the world is even not 6 degree of separation the world exhibits 3.57 degree of separation so even even that the, the, the diameter is even lesser than this okay of course on their on their social network you can also measure your degree of separation the when facebook there's an app right you can also measure your degree of separation my degree of separation is 3.29 it means that i can send a letter to to uh, donald trump within three hops okay okay so so this is called small world uh, the small world property essentially indicates that the the distance the the, the, the average diameter of a network is very small right uh there are many so and 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 think about it when i talk about average distance of a network is small even if we have billions of nodes in the network okay you can you you should start imagining that in that graph there might be hubs right now now think of this structure the one that i mentioned right this is a hub right each of these nodes are hubs without hub without a hub structure you will never be able to realize a small world network right so small world network if you prove that a network has small world property right you will then 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 it indirectly infers that the network has multiple hubs okay small world property also uh, indicates the notion of average path length right it also indicates something called clustering coefficient right now what is clustering coefficient i have slides but i am not sure that i'll be able to cover that part so let me explain it here. explain it here what is clustering coefficient so clustering coefficient of a node right so this is node u 
clustering coefficient of a node is is measured by the fraction of edges please listen to it carefully the fraction of edges among the neighbors of the node by okay so let me write it uh, possible number of edges among the neighbors of u actual number of edges actual number of edges among the neighbors of u okay so this is u and and so let me let me redraw it again u a b c d okay uh, can you tell me the clustering coefficient of u what's the value of denominator possible number of edges among the neighbors of u how many how many neighbors are there of u how many uh, neighbors are there three a b and c right so a b and c these are neighbors how many how many possible edges are there how many edges are possible between a b c unmute unmute karo six why so, uh, why you not taking d as a possible uh, neighbor d is, d is not used neighbor d is not connected to u neighbor means one one of neighbor neighbor okay. mean neighbor a neighbor of a node is the one which is directly connected to the node so a b and c are directly connected to you so a b and c are use neighbors right how many possible how many edges are possible among b uh, among a b and c tell me quick someone is saying 6 why 6 it is a uh, 3c2 uh, to form uh, i mean to count the number of the edges in between say n number of the vertices uh, the the value is nc2 n choose uh, two. so a b c can you can, can you draw can, can you draw six edges here remember no, the edges are undirected okay uh so uh, there would be six edges if i uh, take u also into the consideration no so, yes. see, see the definition here man number of possible edges among the neighbors of u excluding u is so, it 3 3 right so three edges are possible so 3 and what what's the actual number of edges among neighbors in the graph a b oh. and b c Two. AC is not connected, so two. two. So the clustering coefficient is two by three, right? Now, so this this is math, but to try to understand, try to understand the meaning of this clustering coefficient. What 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 is this indicating? It basically indicates that among my friends, forget about me. Just look at my friends. Among my friends, how many of them are connected? Right. So. if all of my friends are connected if all of my friends are connected the clustering clustering coefficient would be 1 right so it means that my friends am among my friends the understanding is high right they are all friends of each other so the less the value of clustering coefficient the higher the chance that my friends will not be my friends will not have understanding and the higher the chance that my friendship network will break some day right higher the value of clustering coefficient indicates my friends have high understanding i it means that our bonding will not break now right now you can imagine the applications of clustering coefficient so, uh, in what about yeah. the disconnected graph then no disconnected graph we will not consider whenever we we measure uh, i mean whenever we do all this mathematics whenever we measure all these metrics 
we always consider the connected graph the connected component of the graph okay sir hmm. so so what does it mean i mean now think of an application right say for example uh, say for example uh, you are you were predict uh, say for example you are uh, in, in some application you are uh, you are attacking the graph okay attacking the graph means you are trying to destroy you are trying to destroy the, the the connections in the network right so what are the typical nodes that you should target so you should target those nodes whose clustering coefficient is less yes. because you already know that if you disconnect that if you disconnect those nodes their neighborhood structure will be disconnected will be decentralized right and that's your purpose okay now think about it again now two cases right one case this is this case one this is case two this node has three friends this node has also three friends case b all the all the neighbors are connected here only two neighbors are connected so the clustering coefficient in case of one is one by three the clustering coefficient in case of two is one right so it means that if i attack this node if i attack this node right and remove this node from the network what would happen all the associated edges will be removed right you will end up having three nodes these three nodes right with only one edge remaining so you have already made the graph disconnected look at here this 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 node has has got disconnected but what about this if you remove this node what would happen nothing would happen all these three nodes will still be connected right so this this clustering coefficient is very useful in case of attacks attacking a network or in case of community structure we'll discuss later okay now moving to the next property is called scale free network scale free structure again anybody has any idea about scale free structure what is scale free network any idea well thirty tail power law ah uh, okay so so what is scale free what is what i mean what is scale free property so scale free property is basically in general forget about networks okay in general what is scale free uh, i mean what is scale free function scale free function say Say there's a function f x, right? Y equals to f x. Okay. Okay. Now, if we replace, if we replace x by alpha x, alpha is a constant. Okay. So you have y dash is f of alpha x. Okay. So now, if you plot x and y, right? and say say just again for the sake of discussion you just imagine that this is the this is the fx curve okay and and similarly you basically plot alpha x right uh, and say this is your f dash h this is f dash x for example f dash x curve okay so what is scale free scale, scale free scale free function means that that the geometric property the geometric structure of of the curve of the function will remain same while you scale while you scale the value of x so from x you you so so earlier you 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 had only x now you have alpha times x right so you basically scale up uh the value of x or scale down right so in order to do, i mean i mean after that when you scale up or down the independent variable which is x you look at the you look at the uh, the, the the geometric property of of this function okay and if the geometric property of the function doesn't vary doesn't change after scaling it is called scale free structure let me give an example okay say
So alpha can be uh, a polynomial constant. having any degree. No, alpha alpha is just a constant. It's a constant. Okay, 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 uh, okay. It's a constant. Um, how do you measure the area of a square? If we know that the uh, the length of each side is x. Area of a square? Square them. Bolo. Huh? The square them. X square? No? Yes, sir. So, so y equal to fx equal to x square. Now, you replace x by 2x. What would happen? You will get y dash, right? f of 2x, which is 2x square, which is 4x square, nothing but 4 into fx. Right? So, so what would happen after this? So, you, you basically scale up x. If you, 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 you scale up x, right? After scaling up, you still get the same y with some constant multiplication. So if you multiply a curve with a constant, what would happen? This would either either shifted, this would either be shifted towards top, I mean to, to uh, towards top or towards bottom, depending on scale up or scale down. But the geometric property of the curve will remain the same. So this is no, called scale free. Same thing as uh, the time complexity, how we can compute the time complexity of an algorithm, right? Well, I mean, please don't same. mix up those two, two those two concepts. So that's different. I mean, I know the way we 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 teach time complexity looks very similar to this, but this is not same as this. So scale free property basically says that if you scale up or scale down the independent variable, which is x in this case, the geometric property of the dependent variable, which is y will remain same, right? This is a scale free, uh, so area of a square is, remember, area of a square is a scale free function. Now in case of graph, in case of network, right? It turned out that the degree, so it turned out the degree distribution, okay? The degree distribution of the degree distribution of um, of a graph is scale free now what is degree distribution degree distribution means you you have this graph and you plot degree d and what is this p of d probability of a probability of a node having degree d is this is the discrete degree distribution okay so if you do this you will see that it looks like this something like this okay and if you if you um if you um, um uh, if you fit all these functions like you have polynomial function you have binomial function even poisson distribution you have you have normal distribution right you have power law distribution skill free so if you fit this curve right with all these uh, all these functions you see that it fits well with power law function, right? This is this is power law. Okay. Now you see here the degree, the degree distribution varies with minus of alpha. So PD, PD is proportional to D to the power minus alpha, right? Where alpha in general for real network. Alpha varies between two to three. Now this is scale free. Why this is scale free? You you replace d by two d. What would happen if you replace the d by two d? So p of d is d to the power minus alpha, right? P of two d is two to the power minus alpha d to the power minus alpha. This is a constant. So you still get some constant beta say. P of D. Okay, so this is scale free, right? And this is also called power law. Why this is power law? Because, because the 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 property of P D changes 
with the power of x. Okay, so and the good part about about, about uh, all these uh, scale free uh, functions, uh, I mean power law function, scale free function is that if you take log log in both sides, what would happen? P d is d to the power minus alpha. If you take log, what would happen? Bolo. What would happen? Log of P d equals to minus alpha log of d. Right. So in log log scale, and 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 what type of equation it it is? What type of equation it is? Is it a? It's a linear equation. It's a it's 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 a it's a it's an equation of a line. Right. Y goes to m x. So the log log scale. If you take power law in log log scale, you see that this is just a line. This is d. This is log of p d. Okay. So what is the? I mean, I mean, what is the uh, conclusion of this discussion? Basically, if you plot the degree distribution of a network in a log log scale. and if you see a straight line that means the network follows a power law the network has a scale free structure right now think of this network and this is a power law okay but if you have this kind of the kind of network random network you don't see a power law you see just a normal distribution okay that means it doesn't follow the scale free property it follows the scale free property so now we understood that okay real world structures follow scale free property real world graphs follow power law property but what so but 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 uh, i mean what do we what do we do with the power law property so leke kya karenge hum log right if we have a power law property then what do i understand about the structural property of the graph right so think about it again carefully i need answer from you okay this is d degree and this is pd okay right and you see that the graph looks like this remember what is pd pd is the pd is the fraction of nodes with degree d okay are right so degree 1 degree 2 degree 3 degree 4 degree 5 and this indicates this value indicates the fraction of nodes with degree 1 fraction of nodes with degree 2 fraction of nodes with degree 3 and so on and so forth say degree 100 you see a long tail here a long tail right what does it mean it means there are very few nodes here with very high degree and there are a lot of nodes with low degree agreed right so very few nodes with high degree what does it mean high degree node means hubs right so in the network there are very few nodes with a lot of degree and there are a lot of nodes with very few degree okay this is also called 80 20 rule 80/20 rule you may have heard about this term uh, this this uh, terminology before so 80/20 rule uh, is generally applied in economics which basically says that 20% individuals in our society have 80% of wealth and 80% individuals in our society have 20% of wealth okay uh this 80 20 rule similarly here in in case of network 20% nodes in the graph have very high degree 80% of degree right 80% of nodes in the graph have 20% of degree okay so whenever you if you somehow if if you are able to understand that the network the network uh, follows power law property you will immediately you will Im immediately infer that the network has a very few number of hubs and lot of uh, nodes with small degree 
okay uh any 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 questions so far any so we have covered two very important properties one is called scale free property other is called small world property Uh, is this necessary for a social network to have both the properties or we can have uh, very good question so in general uh, social network all the social networks uh, i would say follow all the property follow small world property but of course it is not necessary there are networks like metabolic network there are networks like um, like um, uh, other biological networks railway networks where you will not see power law you will not you will not see scale free but if you see power law you will infer that the network structure would look like would look like this hubs and uh, and, and and other small degree nodes right right okay i'm skipping this because these are not very useful uh we have already covered what's the we all, we all know what is the degree of a node we all know what is the path length right what is the diameter already covered we do we know what is connected component of a graph so connected component of a graph means um uh, if there's a connected component of a graph it means that any two nodes if you if if you pick any two nodes in that uh, from that connected components there should be at least a path between two nodes okay now based on the notion of connected component there are there are two notions one is called strongly connected component other is called weakly connected component okay so so these two notions are applied when the graph is directed in nature okay strongly connected component basically says that if you choose any two nodes from the component there should be at least a path which follows the direction of the edges right think of think of this a b c a b c this is graph g this is graph g dash so so the, in this component right if you choose any two nodes say you choose a and c right there's a path a a to b b to c choose c and b there's a path c to a to b right so this is a strongly connected component what is weakly connected component now in weakly connected component it may happen in a component it may happen that if you follow the direction you 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 may not have you you may not encounter a path between any pair of nodes right if you forget the direction of an edge you should be able to you should be able to move from one node to another node say for example in this graph right if you want to move from a to c how do you do that you can't do because from a to b there's a there's a direction but from b to c you can't go because the direction is from c to b right so this is not a strongly connected component but this is weakly connected because if you ignore the directionality and if you imagine that this is an undirected network then you can move sorry this should be an edge like this no 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 no, no sorry uh, this is fine uh, sorry so a b c right this is weakly connected because if you remove the directionality of an edge right you can move to any node to another node a to c a to b b to c right so on and so forth okay and connected component uh, basically a graph is called disconnected if there is at least one pair of nodes within which there is no path okay so whenever we analyze all these social network we generally generally first identify connected components and then we uh, do all this mathematics all these formulations on the connected component 
okay we ignored the other i mean we ignored the small components we consider the large component now this large component is called giant component remember this so in social network what happens is that there are multiple such components right among this one component is extremely large 80 88 to 90% of nodes are present in this component it is called giant component so we generally do all the analysis on the giant component we ignore small small components okay any 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 query in the last slide uh, mm. i understand what is strongly connected what is weakly mm. connected mm. Uh, what is component so component component of a graph is is a subset or a subgraph of a graph where any nodes if you if you, if you pick any nodes a, i mean any pair of nodes there should be a path between them mm. okay say for example let me give an example again say yeah. this is a graph okay the entire thing is a graph the entire thing is a graph okay um but but this is one component this is another component why because if you if you consider the entire graph as a component and if you choose one node from here say another node from here you will see there there is no path um, so the component okay. is a subgraph a component is a subgraph a connected a connected component is a subgraph where if you choose any pair of nodes there should be a path between them true i understand you mean to say connected component and component uh, interchangeably yeah 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 connected component is a component okay. same yeah yeah, yeah. right connected right. component is a component same yeah yeah okay. so degree distribution we have already discussed right power law we discussed um right scale invariant we discussed already power law we discussed right um this is also discussed um clustering coefficient you also discussed right actual number of edges by possible number of edges uh, among the nodes among the neighbors of a node right um component we discussed strongly connected weakly connected right now we are moving to a very important concept called centrality i will take 10 more minutes and then i'll stop okay uh so centrality centrality is a property of a node okay now what does it indicate it indicates a centrality measure indicates four important properties of a node the prestige of a node the prominence of a node the importance of a node and the power of a node so i i generally call it as four p's right uh, uh basically you know you 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 want to measure how important right how prominent a node is with respect to a graph okay now there are multiple such centrality measures okay i will here i will discuss three important centrality measures that we generally consider okay so the first one is called degree centrality okay degree centrality of a node remember this is a no, this is a node centric property okay so the degree centrality of a of a node is is as simple as the number of is is as simple as the degree of a node okay so in case of a directed graph there are two kinds of degrees one is called in degree other is called out degree right uh, right this is a directed graph so so the in degree of node u is is number of inward edges pointing to you in this case this is this is 2 in degree is 2 what is out degree out degree is number of outward edges emanating or or, or emitting uh, moving out of this u which which in this case is 1 okay so in degree is 2 out degree is 1 similarly here in degree is 1 out degree is 0 in degree is 1 out degree is 0 in degree 1 out degree 1 in degree 1 out degree 0 okay so in case of directed graph in degree out degree in case of undirected graph only degree so when we say degree centrality degree centrality of a node is the degree of a node 
normalized normalized by the number of edges present in the graph so so degree of say degree of say node 3 is what degree of node 3 uh, degree centrality of node 3 is is degree of node 3 which is 1 2 3 4 4 by total number of edges present in the graph which is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 right now why we are normalizing the degree why we are normalizing here because we we are normalizing here right by by, by, by the number of pages so the reason is that we we want to make the degree centrality value between 0 to 1 so see here right the degree of a node will never be more than the number of pages so the numerator the numerator value would always be the number of pages the maximum value maximum value of the numerator would always be the number of pages so the so the extreme case when a node is connected to all the other nodes in the in the in the network right the extreme case the uh, the, 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 the 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 degree would be the, de the degree centrality would be uh, uh, the number of pages now so so you you can either normalize it by number of pages or you can normalize it by the number of nodes in fact so it can be degree of u by 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 in minus one because you can ignore the current node so maximum degree of a node can be n minus one what no maximum degree of a node is n minus one so therefore the maximum degree centrality of a node would be one right so this is called degree centrality this is very simple the next one is called closeness centrality so what is closeness centrality closeness centrality is measured by the shortest path from that node to the other nodes okay say for example you are measuring the closeness centrality of of node 3 what do you do you take the shortest path you take the shortest path from 3 to 1 shortest path distance from 3 to 1 which in this case is 1 shortest path distance of 3 to 2 which is 1 shortest path between 3 to 4 which is also 1 shortest path between 3 to 5 which is also 1 in this case shortest path between 3 to 6 which is 2 right and shortest path between 3 to 7 which is also 2 right you you measure the shortest path first right you take the sum of all shortest paths from that node okay you take the sum of all shortest paths from the node right and that's your closeness centrality of course you can do multiple things but this is the simplest measure so the closeness centrality of a node is the sum of shortest paths of that node to all the other nodes so you can see here the lower the value of closeness centrality what does it indicate the lower the value of closeness centrality the higher the chance that the node is the node is what follow can send messages to others Hub. Yeah, that's the node is a hub hub the yeah. node is a hub or, or or the node is a central node of a network the lower the value of closeness centrality the higher the chance to say, say for example for this node the centrality value is the lowest for this node the centrality value is highest right so the lower lower the closeness centrality higher the chance that the node acts like a hub but the node is a central part of the network right and the higher the value of closeness centrality indicates the nodes are basically uh, the, the nodes are placed at the peripheral region of the graph not the central region okay but what we, what people do in general just to make higher the higher the better higher is better right people generally take the reciprocal of the central, closeness centrality whatever measure i mean whatever things i just measured take the sum of all the shortest paths right you just take the reciprocal of that okay so if you take the reciprocal of that then higher Higher the closeness centrality, higher the chance that it's a hub. Right? 
just to make all the centrality values higher the better right you can take the reciprocal of the the, the, the value that i mentioned okay now i, I i'll sir, come to the point why uh, yes sir is this really uh, feasible to uh, compute the shortest path in a network having millions of the nodes it's a very good question so uh, no uh, it is it, it is not possible if you use traditional uh, shortest path distance algorithm okay there are multiple such algorithms which are efficiently designed to handle large graph okay of course you may not be able to get the exact solution but you can approximate the distance okay if you if you simply google it you get multiple such uh, efficient closeness centered measures which 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 can be useful for large network now the way i am presenting here sounds like a very naive solution but if you really want to understand you know efficient algorithms for closeness centrality measurement you'll have to look at those papers okay. but you can opt to that right you can do that ha huh. okay now the next concept is called betweenness and i'll stop here i don't have time i'll stop here um so this is called betweenness centrality what is betweenness centrality so the concept might might sound similar to the closeness centrality but please understand the difference properly so in case of betweenness centrality what you do so for example you are measuring the betweenness centrality of node 3 what do you do you take all pairs of nodes in the graph right 1 2 1 3 1 4 1 5 1 6 1 7 2 3 2 4 2 5 2 6 2 7 3 4 3 5 3 6 3 7 6 7 7 right so on and so forth you take all pairs of nodes first right now for each pair you figure out the shortest distance right you figure out the shortest distance and you see how many times the particular node under inspection falls in the shortest path between the two nodes right let me let me repeat it again so let me repeat it again so um, um just a minute to 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 let me think of an example okay so let's take a pair 2 and um 7 no uh 2 and 7 is not possible uh 2 2 2 1 2 1 2 let me draw it let me draw draw a graph okay a b c d small graph okay so what's the first task first task is you first take all pairs a b a c a d b c b d c d okay now for a b you see that what's the shortest path between a, between a and b and remember what is the task here the task is to calculate the betweenness centrality of b right so a b there's only one shortest path and b the node b falls in the shortest path so how many shortest paths are there between a and b one and in that shortest path and how many how many shortest paths are there where node b is present one let's take ac ac okay mm. uh ac so so how many shortest paths are there between a and c one okay uh, and 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 uh, okay let's let, let's choose another shortest let, let's consider another node e okay how many shortest paths are there between a and c two right a b b c and a e e c both the shortest path has both the shortest paths have length 2 right and how many shortest paths contain the node b one this shortest path so there are 
two shortest paths between up between uh, A and C, right? And there is only one shortest path between A and C where the node B appears. I hope you all agree that there can be multiple shortest paths between a pair of nodes. The yes, shortest sir. path solution is not uh, not unique, right? There can be multiple solutions, right? As you can see here. Similarly, A D. There is only one shortest path between A and D, and B follows there. B B B falls in there. B C again one by one. B D one by one. C D. What about C D? One by one. You also you also have to do A E right? A E B B, B C D. I'm not going to that, that that part. But but you understand right? So for B, we check all shortest paths, all pairs shortest paths, and we basically see how many cases uh, this falls right? And then you take the sum. You take the sum, sum of all. Right? You take the sum of all. Now tell me, what is the maximum value? Of between a centrality of a node, if you take the sum, right, right, what would be the maximum value that that is possible? Bolo. What is the maximum value of between a centrality? You take the sum. Now you are taking the sum. Now what is the maximum value of individual this fraction one? Maximum value would be one. Number right? of connections. Number of edges. No number no. of pairs we have taken. Number of pairs, right? Oh, number yes. of pairs in C two, right? This is the maximum value. Therefore, when we measure the betweenness centrality, we take the sum first, and we normalize it by N C two, so that the the value maximum value uh, always uh, be one, and it ranges between zero to one, right? Now you try to understand the difference between closeness and betweenness. In closeness, what we have done in closeness, we measured the shortest from the uh, shortest path from that node to all the other nodes, right? But in betweenness, in in, in betweenness centrality, we took all pairs of shortest paths, and we we basically uh, measured how many shortest paths contain the particular node. Okay, now tell me where you use closeness centrality, where you use betweenness centrality. So closeness centrality is a measure of basically understanding how how central a node is, right? Betweenness centrality is also a kind of a measure uh, to, um, to to basically quantify how how central a node is, but the applications are different. Okay, now let me give you an example application, right? Now assume that your task is so assume that all this, uh, you know, this is uh, COVID-19 coronavirus is spreading, right? Using human contact, and you have this human contact network, right? Where nodes are human beings, and uh, and 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 edges indicate whether uh, two two human beings, uh, I mean, come to close contact regularly or not, right? And imagine that you have limited vaccines. You can vaccinate limited number of users. Users. Uh, human beings, right? So, which centrality measures you choose to vaccinate to to identify human beings for the vaccination, so that the the spread will stop at a certain point in time. Closeness. So closeness centrality. Why, why closeness? Why closeness? Why not betweenness? Hello. Closeness. Imagine. So closeness is closeness centrality. When we talk about closeness centrality, although it's a, I mean, closeness centrality does not take into account the entire graph in some ways. Whereas betweenness centrality takes into account the entire graph holistically, right? So think about a case. Just a minute. So let me give an example. Okay, think about a graph like this. Think about a graph like this.
okay now in this graph a b c d e f g h i what do you think uh, whose closeness centrality is high whose betweenness centrality is high bolo C is closeness centrality would be C. high, or 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 E is closeness centrality would be high. I I think C is closeness centrality would be high, right? Whose betweenness centrality would be high? F or E? You measure, you will see. So betweenness centrality measure basically indicates that, I mean, the nodes whose betweenness centrality values are higher, basically indicate. that those nodes fall those nodes basically act as a bridge between two communities between two clusters see here e f these are bridges because there is one cluster here there is another cluster here and these are kind of bridges right whereas closeness centrality indicates the central node of of one cluster so if you want to vaccinate you would possibly vaccinate if because you know that if you vaccinate if if the contagion if the virus has already has already spread here the virus will not be able to spread to 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 to, to come to this community because there is only one node who can infect i mean who who basically acts as a bridge between these communities right and if you vaccinate it if if if, if you vaccinate this guy the virus will not move to this this component right so this is one application now think about another application you want to you want to spread a fake news you want to spread a fake news within a community who you should target c because you know that c is a hub and c is connected to more, more or less all the nodes in the community so if you convince c to spread the fake news it will it will rapidly move it will rapidly spread within the community right so in short when you want to design something with respect to certain community or certain clusters you should use clustering uh, you should use closeness centrality if you want to design something with respect to right when i am in a case where multiple communities are involved you can use between a centrality okay i'll stop here i don't know whether shivani has time to uh, present i have i had a lot of slides but i i understood that i won't be able to present it but i still wanted to keep it longer but shivani are you there so yes, shivani will give you ha bolo 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 kya question hai sir uh, how can we compare uh, two algorithms say if i design a new algorithm to track the community for and, for uh, what and, what's the application uh, say for the community detection sir and uh, mm -hmm. i i use network x say and uh, if so, someone asks ask me to it. compare got it yeah, got it with got the it. i graph right i got it so yeah. how do we do that so say the application is community detection okay i was sir. not able to cover it but imagine that the uh, application is graph clustering and community detection and uh, uh, and and you have your own algorithm i have uh, i mean you 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 have your own algorithm i have my own algorithm and mm -hmm. someone else has uh, his own algorithm how do we know that which algorithm is better mm -hmm. right what we typically do there are two ways so mm -hmm. in one way we generally compare it with ground truth structure so we consider mm -hmm. we choose those networks whose ground truth mm -hmm. structures are i mean what is ground truth the <clears throat> the ground truth is basically the true structure of a, a, a true, true community structure of a graph right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. if we have a ground truth structure then we should compare our algorithms output with the ground truth using mm -hmm. metrics like nmi ari i mean normalized mm -hmm. mutual information adjust, adjacent uh, adjusted rand index uh, uh, or even right? on the basis of the modularity q say no 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 i'm coming to that So, okay. so this is more of a 
this is more of a, a ground truth based uh, comparison but what mm-hmm. happens in most cases is that you do not know the ground truth okay mm-hmm. then what you do you use some external metrics like modularity conductance cart ratio mm-hmm. permanence right mm-hmm. to uh, mm-hmm. to 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 measure the value of your output right and mm-hmm. say, say for example in case of modularity the higher the better so among mm-hmm. these three algorithms which one gives maximum value for modularity you consider it as a best algorithm mm-hmm. okay but people generally do not use modularity reason is that modularity itself has limitations and mm-hmm. um, people generally go with ground truth based validation but sir my question is that mm. uh, i cannot uh, go for the real i mean uh, I, I cannot go for, uh, go with a large real network at the no, most there i there are there are networks there are networks with ground truth communities large networks with ground truth communities uh, community yes sir that is that, that is true huh. most of the networks are even mm. available on the snap but mm. the the constraint is that i would be executing my algorithm on mm. the laptop right sir mm. and if i compare the efficiency of my algorithm with say oh, well, the that's, fast that's, movement that's the, the i mean that's the equipment bottleneck i mean you can you can solve it using i mean equipment bottleneck is something different infrastructure bottleneck is different i mean of course you can't run your algorithm i mean you can't learn you can't run uh, uh, like a scalable algorithm on your laptop you have to have a gpu access right okay. but uh, but but yeah i mean infrastructure is something which which should not be a bottleneck for for comparing between algorithms but sir my question was slightly different <laughs> acha bolo bolo uh, yeah sir my question is that uh, i would be implementing my algorithm in the mm. network x and mm. which is basically written in the python mm. and the implementation of most of the efficient algorithms mm. is mm. available in igraph and mm. in igraph most of the implementations are there in c mm. so if i compare my algorithm with mm. the existing ones on the basis mm. of the execution time mm. that mm. won't be fair because python would be taking hell lot of the time in comparison mm. to the to something Which mm. is written native. Mm. So to address such issues, I mean, I know I have two constraints. The first constraint mm. is that I cannot uh, test my algorithm mm. uh, for the large real life, real world networks because mm. of the computing constraint number one. Mm. Mm. And second, I feel that I am getting good measures of NMI. Mm. I am getting mm. good measures of Q, but I mm. cannot compare the efficiency of my algorithm mm. just by representing the time complexity. So what could be the better way or the middle way? to show the preponderance of the proposed approach with the existing ones so time complexity wise measurement is required i mean whenever you propose because commutation detection, commutation detection is a very old problem i mean my thesis was also com- on commutation detection uh, i mean so but but remember when you when you compare your method with existing methods with respect to time complexity right you report in terms of asymptotic time complexity order of no, n no, order no, of no, sir, right? no, no, no sir because the computer community detection itself is a uh, computationally intractable problem so how can i uh, uh, give a polynomial time algorithm uh, to detect the community in general uh, so but i would polynomial be polynomial of what the, uh, uh, e polynomial with uh, respect to what uh, pardon sir polynomial of what polynomial of age uh, or node of what uh polynomial in terms of the input size say uh what do but, you mean input uh, size number of nodes or number of pages uh sir uh, uh i there uh, are n I log n be... there are algorithms whose comp- uh, commutation algorithms whose complexity is n log n so you can use that i understand your question so the, the and you you also know the answer so answer is very simple <laughs> if you want to compare you will have to implement it in c or c++ or you will have to implement uh, it with by uh, using python with an efficient uh, packages because when it comes to run time python is nowhere uh, right so that is I mean, the issue <laughs> when i i also designed an algorithm called max form during my phd and that mm-hmm. uh, that um, uh, outperformed uh, modularity based algorithms and others and i had to implement it in c++ just to show the efficiency in terms of run time right yeah, uh, but yeah. but still i would i would say that uh, <clears throat> these days if you want to write a paper on commutation algorithm you can still do that without showing the real time uh, real run time you can still show the asymptotic run time right and you can show the yeah. uh, betterment with respect to the accuracy and your your paper can be published i mean 
uh, I mean, the, 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 the physical runtime may not be needed all the times until unless the reviewer asks explicitly. Because uh, physical runtime is something which depends on multiple factors. One is the language, other is the infrastructure on which you are running your code and so on and so forth. So uh, generally, typically people do not ask uh, physical runtime, but anybody can ask. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else? Any other question? Please unmute and ask. <clears throat> hmm. Anybody? I can see another uh, hand raising. Tamil no, Selvi, yes. Uh, by mistake, sir. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I think uh, we don't have time, right, uh, Professor Jen? So yeah, I could see that uh, this topic is heart and soul for you. So I mean, this is my bread and butter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so networks and graphs. Uh, yeah. So I uh, just just uh, for your information, I recently wrote a textbook on social network analysis. Uh, the textbook will be available uh, possibly by next month uh, on Amazon or other Flipkart and other uh, e-commerce platform. Uh, it's 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 called social network analysis and uh, the book is uh, the book has been written uh, keeping in mind basically non iit students right uh, okay. nits triple uh, or state colleges private colleges who uh, do not have any idea about about the uh, stuff i mean about the uh, the, the, the fundamentals mm -hmm. of graphs and all uh, hopefully this will be available. I mean, the book is currently in the uh, proofreading stage. All the chapters are done. Hopefully, end of next month, August end, this should be this, this will be available publicly. I will circulate it with you, and you can possibly circulate it with uh, other, yeah, that is uh, great. Uh, other, other members. Yeah. You mean to say it will be good for uh, graph theory teaching also? Uh, uh, actually, not. I mean, graph theory. Graph theory. Um, I mean, I have intentionally not covered graph, graph theory. Graph theory is a separate uh, topic altogether. And if I go into the details of graph theory, then it will take another, I mean, another complete yeah. lecture. Mm. Mm. So I intentionally tried to make it uh, uh, simple. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and and I uh, I mostly focused on um, focused on uh, so social network structure. The social network. Uh, True. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, the, the book has chapters, the exercises, other uh, information for teachers as well. So, um, I mean, I, I'm thinking of doing some FDP with teachers um, once the book is being released. And uh, uh, it is also a low cost. I mean, it is, I think uh, they will make it 600 bucks. So, uh, might be affordable for common students as well to buy this, uh, I mean, to buy this book. So, uh, I mean, I will, I will, I will inform you once uh, it is available True. publicly. Hmm? True, sir. We'll be waiting for it. Hmm. Okay. 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 So, Thanks. Uh, and if you thank have you anything so else, uh, no, definitely. Thank you so much, and we will connect to you uh, in near future also, hmm. sure. as and when we feel like. Sure. So, sure. Uh, Shivani will be continuing. Okay. Okay. Thanks is a lot. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Bye bye. Uh, so, Shivani, uh, have you joined with Shivani or Sh uh, Okay, this is Shivani. Yeah, hi. Okay, please, please go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, I'm not sure how much time do we have? Okay, we have uh, 40 minutes. Uh, I mean to say 15 plus 10, 25 minutes. Okay, sure. So, so half an hour, yeah. probably we, we could maximum go for half an hour. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's enough time. Thank you so much. So, hello everyone. I'm Shivani. I'm a PhD student. Hold on. Triple I'm two. so sorry. Hold on. I'm so yeah. sorry, Shivani. We have till 11.30. So, 10 to 15 minutes only we could go because next session is to start at 11.45. Uh, right. Okay, okay. That's not an issue. So, I'll just quickly cover the topics okay. that I had right. in mind. Thank you. Thank, thanks for that. So uh, I hope you're able to see my screen. Uh, yes, very much. All right. So hi, everyone. I'm Shivani. I'm a PhD student at IIITD, uh, advised by Dr. Tanmoy itself. 
and today so uh, uh, what uh, we discussed in the talk we'll just see how we can implement it in python using network x which is a package that is used to create uh, manipulate and analyze complex networks so uh, to begin with uh, firstly we should make sure that the network x package is actually installed in our systems if it is not present we will install it via choice of installation mode so here i have used uh, pip and uh, since it is already in a system, it is showing requirement already satisfied. Then we import this package. And so this package we import it as an acronym so that we do not have to use the whole network X word everywhere where we use it. And now that the package is imported, so uh, this package it actually provides us uh, with different types of graphs. So uh, it provides us with a simple undirected graph which we can create by calling this function called graph. It, we can also create a directed network by calling this function diagraph and we can also create a multi graph which is actually used to create a graph having self loops of or multiple edges between two nodes that is parallel edges. So the, for the purpose of uh, this, uh, this session, we'll just stick to this undirected network. Right? So now to firstly to create a graph, we need to add nodes to it. Right. So we can add a node to the graph by using this add node function of the object type graph. And uh, here what we're doing is we are passing the label basically of the node to this add node function. Right. And then we are calling this uh, draw network x uh, function of the network x library that and passing the graph to it that is used to display the graph to us. So we have this and we can see that our graph is created with only one node as we have specified here with the label A. Okay. Now that we know how to add a node to the graph, we'll see how can we add new edges to the graph. All right. So we can do so by simply calling this add edge function on the graph object. The function it takes as an input the source and the target node along with any additional information that we want to provide for the edge. For example, here we are giving the information about the circle in which the two node belongs to and how many years of friendship they have. So this these uh, additional information can be anything. Okay, so this is just an example that we have taken here. One more thing to note about this function add edge is that the nodes that are specified here if they are not already present in the graph, as is the case here, these nodes will automatically be added to the network and an edge will be created the, between them. All right, so we add this edge and we call this draw network function again to see the network. And so here we have the network. We have the, this isolated node A that, uh, that we have already created in the above step. And this step, this results in two more nodes B and C with an edge between them. So now to see these attributes that we have provided to the edge, we can call this G, uh, G that is the graph object. We can call this function get edge data on it and uh, the source node and the target node for which, uh, for which edge we want to get the data for. So we run this and we see that this particular edge has this, these two information, friendship is and circle as we have provided here. So this, uh, uh, this way that we have just seen. So uh, by using this way, we are adding one node at a time. And by using this way, we are adding one edge at a time. But what we can also do is that we can use a text file that contains edge information to populate our network. For example, here I have used this kind of text file. So this is just a demo file for this uh, purpose for this session. So this text file should look like this. That is the source node followed by a space and followed by the target node. All right, so an edge will be formed between this, these pairs of node. So what do we provide to this read edge list function, which actually populates the network with the information present in the text file? We provide it with the uh, uh, file name, right? We provide it with the type of graph we want uh, the resultant graph to be. So here we are going for an undirected graph and the type of nodes that are present in the file. So here we have integer type nodes. See, we have node from one to nine with edges between them. 
all right we use this function read at list to uh, read these uh, this file and then we have uh, the resultant graph in the graph object g and we uh, draw this graph and we can see that this type of a graph is generated using this uh, um, this text file so now instead of using just graph an indirected graph we can also create a directed graph uh, using the file and a directed graph will look like this where <clears throat> each line will represent a source node so an, an edge will be created from this source node to this target node so from 2 to 9 so can we see like from 2 to 9 there is an edge di directed from 2 to 9 all right <clears throat> So next, so th these are just the basics of network. That is how we can add the node and edges. So we'll just l limit ourselves to these uh, ba th these basic functions only right now. So then next, uh, in the talk, what we saw was uh, various different properties of the network, right? So let us just discuss that. So uh, to do that, uh, what I'm doing is I am taking this a very common network that is Karate Club network. Uh, it is a network of a university's karate club where there were uh, two instructors who uh, who basically had a tiff and the club was further divided into two parts so this uh, this particular network was first published in this paper by uh, Wayne Zachary all right so this network it is actually a popular example when it comes to study about community detection and so we'll just uh, the network x it provides this network just by a call of the function so here we call this function nx dot karate club graph and uh, this particular object this graph object gk it is populated by this karate club graph now we'll just see what how many nodes and how many edges does this graph have by calling these simple functions a uh, number of nodes and number of edges on top of this graph and we see that this network has 34 uh, nodes with 78 edges so the first uh, property that we'll observe is degree. So we'll just create a simple degree histogram where what we do is we extract all the degrees by using this gk.degree function, which gives us a dictionary of all the nodes with their degree. Uh, so the, the dictionary contains key and values, so n and d in degree, and we extract just the d from it. That is the degree of the nodes. And we create a list out of it. And then we uh, call this collections and counter on this degree sequence, uh, which gives basically gives us a dictionary that uh, that have keys as the degree and values are the number of nodes having that degree. All right. So uh, like uh, moving forward with this, we uh, take uh, into this uh, uh, into this object degree of all the degrees that are present and the number of nodes we take into count. Then we uh, just initialize the subplot and we create a bar graph on it and we give the title and the appropriate labels and we set the right tricks and so we can see here that this particular graph this karate club graph has most number of nodes are having degree two followed by three and four around six six nodes each have three and four degrees then uh, three nodes maybe have five degree followed by two nodes with six degree and then there are uh, one node each for degree 1, 9, 10, 12, 16, and 17. Right? So this is uh, so this is how we can see the degree histogram for our network. Moving on, uh, uh, so clustering coefficient was discussed in today's talk. So there can be two types of clustering coefficient. Firstly, for each of the nodes that we have, that is the local clustering coefficient of the nodes. So for that, we can to uh, compute that we can use uh, nx dot clustering function that gives us the local clustering coefficient for the uh, node three present in the graph GK. So basically, clustering coefficient tells us the extent of connectivity of the of a node's neighbor, right? And uh, so transitivity or global clustering coefficient is given by this function nx dot transitivity. That is the whole clustering coefficient of the uh, whole network as a whole. So we uh, run this function and we can see that uh, since we know that the clustering coefficient values lie between 0 and 1. And here for the node 3, it is giving the clustering coefficient of 0 0.66. So we can say that it is relatively higher in nature as it lies above 0 0.5. Right? And whereas for the whole network, it is uh, 0 0.25. So it is uh, uh, slightly lower than the uh, average. The last thing that we'll discuss today is the centrality measures as discussed in the today's talk. 
so we we discussed today degree centrality that is uh, the node with higher degree will have higher degree centrality another thing was closeness centrality that is a node that is closer to most of the other node will have the highest closeness centrality the other one is betweenness centrality that if a node is uh, present more in the shortest distant path of other two nodes that will have the highest betweenness centrality and the fourth one is the eigenvector centrality so here eigenvector centrality is um, uh, basically it tells us the prestige of a node that is how influential a node is so uh, this is because a node with high eigenvector centrality will be connected to other nodes having high eigenvector centrality all right so we can compute the centrality by using these simple functions uh, that is provided by network like that takes the graph as an input and what we do here is that we this so this particular function this gives us a dictionary of each node with their uh, centrality measures what we do here is we just sort this dictionary in a uh, from in a decreasing order so that the higher value of the centrality comes first so we can see this so the node 33 it has highest degree centrality that is it uh, so if if it was a uh, like a friendship network we could say that the node 33 or 0 they have high number of friends as compared to other nodes uh, similarly we have closeness centrality for closeness we have the zero node and two and 33 these are the node that have high closeness centrality that is we can say that if we want to spread some kind of a message or some kind of information we want to spread some information quickly to the network we can uh, give the information firstly to these nodes because they are more closely connected to the other nodes then we have this betweenness centrality and we can see that nodes 0 and 33 they have again high betweenness centrality too so between for betweenness centrality we can see if we want a particular of uh, like for a particular virus to uh, spread more throughout the whole network we can use betweenness centrality and uh, we are we should infect these nodes basically 0 and 33 if you want the virus to be infected to more population and eigenvector centrality basically tells us how influential a node is. So we can see that 33 and 0 again have highest eigenvector centrality. So we can say that these nodes are the most influential nodes. So for example, in the, the uh, in social media platform, we can say that if we want to endorse our brand, we might want to uh, 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 ask these nodes to help us endorse our brand because these are the most influential nodes. So, uh, yeah, so basically that was it, uh, the introduction to network X and the, the centrality measure and other properties of network. So if you want to go into detail of this, what uh, I just discussed, you can uh, go through this references. I'll, I guess I'll share this uh, PNB file with um, the host. So if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Yeah, this was uh, good enough and a fair start for the participants if they really want to do social network analysis. And uh, if possible, uh, yes, you already told that you will be sharing the uh, IPython file with us. And yeah, I'll share it with the participants. Uh, so is it possible to have a working prototype so that they could uh, grow it later on? So, uh, so what do you mean by working prototype yes, it is it is in fact a working prototype true yeah exactly yeah it is it is uh, you can run it it does not need any other uh, yes yes yeah i think this will serve the purpose and uh, they will get a good start from here okay all right so thank you everyone yeah thank you very much if participants have any question from uh, uh, the speaker please go ahead Yeah. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. And at least a hands on hand for a project demonstration is also there as part of social network analysis for the participants of the FDP. Yeah. Okay.